And we're back. And so after all the doom and gloom surrounding the defeat of Forest at the weekend, the Reds are back to winning ways with a confident and deserved 3-1 win at Milan to kickstart the Champions League campaign. But it wasn't an easy start for Liverpool. But it was a brilliant reaction by the Reds and a couple of players, with Dominic Slobazay in particular answering his critics and answering the boss on a slot. But I'll get onto that in a little bit. Now, it's fair to say that Liverpool struggled in the first 10 minutes. Looking at how Milan set up, I mean, it was kind of funny, really, because it looked like a mirror image of how Liverpool have been setting up this season when the opposition have uh, the ball. It looked like uh, Milan was set up in a kind of a 4-2-4, those four, four front-minded players really pressing Liverpool. And it kind of put Liverpool out the stride a little bit. And we really struggled to get any foothold of the game um, and obviously Milan scored after three minutes. Now, this was the second attack of the game, this second counter-attack where they made Liverpool look really vulnerable. Uh, and in this one, I mean, Costa Simicus was absolutely abysmal in the, you know, his hand in this goal where he, he kind of goes up and doesn't really know whether he's challenging for a header. He doesn't really commit to the header. He doesn't commit to foul on the player. doesn't really make a decision either way. And then, you know, Milan are off to the races. And it was a brilliant goal. 1-0 down there. Liverpool looked shell-shocked. And for the next few minutes, they, again, they looked really vulnerable. But what I would say is that they didn't panic. You know, you got some really good, experienced players out on the pitch there. And you got a, a you know a manager which looks like he's got a bit of a tactical nous, and what we saw over the, like the next five minutes there is Liverpool slowly trying to build, you know themselves back into the game. What was interesting looking at it from a midfield point of view was that um, what we generally see is obviously is is Gravenberg and McAllister in this double pivot. Gavinberg stayed deep and what we saw is McAllister and Slobberslie slightly ahead and splitting wide left and wide right, especially Slobberslie on the right there. Now, this seemed to confuse um, Milan's midfield play, especially their own double pivots. I think it was Loftus-Cheek and Fafana there in the middle for there and it opened up a little bit of space for Liverpool, opened up a little bit of space in particular for Ryan Gravenberg to get on the ball. Um, Alexis McAllister would get on the ball a lot and obviously... Slobber's like we get on the ball. Um, so it was really interesting to see Liverpool slowly got back into the game, slowly become a bit more dominant. I think it was after about 15 or 16 minutes, Mo Salah had that really good chance where he hit the bar. In the game, he, he, I mean, in the first half, he hit the bar twice. Liverpool had plenty of chances, uh, but ultimately got the goal on 22 minutes from Ibrahim Konate. Great header, great delivery from Trent after some brilliant work from Cody Gakpo. More on him in a little bit. He won the foul out there. Great delivery from Trent. I thought he was going to kind of really hit it at a pace and try and test the goalkeeper directly. He didn't do it. He kind of floated it in, chipped it in. Canate, brilliant. Uh, Liverpool's second goal also comes from a set piece. Great stuff by Simicus to get himself back into the game. Get himself an assist after you know a terrible start. Now this is I thought it was really brilliant because this is something that Liverpool haven't really been able to capitalise on recently. I think even last season there we just didn't score enough from set pieces. We didn't score enough from corners. Um, in on a slot's post match presser, he mentioned how this is something that they have been working at. You know, and he, he gave praise to his assistants there for working on set pieces, working on corners. And to get two goals from that after the, something that they've obviously been working at, really, really good. You know, so that's got to be really satisfying for his team there. So, you know, Liverpool going to half time is the better team and come out as the better team, really. I think Milan had maybe about a five, ten minute period there when they got onto the ball a little bit more. But Liverpool just dominated the midfield. And you could see it was a bit more of a kind of a midpoint between what we've seen so far from Arna Slots players, you know, more of a technical midfield, and maybe what we were expecting a little bit more from, from a Jürgen Klopp midfield. You know, players who are a bit more aggressive, trying to win the game, in da- win the ball in dangerous positions. And Liverpool forced possession in Milan's half, 35 times in the game, leading to six chances. So you can see how Liverpool were 
really trying to force things and take responsibility in the game and create their own chances there. I think Dominic Slobosai was key to this. It was, in my opinion, this was his best match for Liverpool. We've seen him score a few better goals. We've seen him have a few better individual moments. But in terms of 90 minutes, this, I think, was his, his best performance. He scores the third goal. Quick word on Cody Gakpo. Absolutely phenomenal stuff there to really make it happen for him down the left. Get a bit of physical work, using his body, using his, his shoulders, and using his strength and speed. And he assists there for Slobber's Eye. But with Slobber's Eye, as I say, I think this was his best match for Liverpool. He had 61 touches, more than any of the other midfield players, more than any other non-defensive players, actually, for Liverpool. Got on the ball a lot. He was all action. Um, really forcing you know uh, Milan players into mistakes. It was up and down the pitch. It was a real box to box performance in many respects. But what was impressive about it, and what was impressive from Arna Slot's point of view, is that Slot didn't exactly dig him out before the match in his press there. But he certainly politely but strongly suggested that for a Liverpool midfield player, Dominic Slobber's eyes numbers should be better. And he's right. He's right in that. One of those numbers is obviously scoring goals. And for the player to come out and face criticism, you know, he could, kind of could have sulked a little bit there. Maybe he could have reacted on social media or even when he scored, he could, you know, he could have, you know, cut the ears or whatever or you know, done all these things, but he didn't. He just knuckled down and got on with it. And it was a bit of a gamble, I think, for Arna Slot to do that because he's a new coach. These players are still getting used to him. If you say the wrong thing, you can get the wrong reaction. But he's needled Slobber's eye just the right amount there, and he got a great reaction out of him because obviously he scored the goal. But he got it was a brilliant all round performance from Slobber's eye, so that was great. Uh, same with Cody Gakpo, I think he hasn't really been critical of him, but he hasn't been playing him. Gives Gakpo a starting game there. Obviously, we we all know that there hasn't been that much rotation from Slot, so he gives Gakpo a go, and Gakpo rewards him with it. Maybe his best performance from Liverpool. This is a way, a way performance at the San Siro, and you know Gakpo maybe favours that left hand side there. He's given a run in it, and he was great. You know, four progressive carries for the Reds, um, the most progressive yardage out of the Liverpool attackers. Lots of direct shooting to, ke- to test the keeper or test the keepers. Uh, as I say, great street and speed and strength to beat his man for the assist for Slobber's Light. So it was a brilliant individual performance from Gakpo. Brilliant individual performance from Slobber's Light. But you could say that across across the uh, the team for Liverpool. Obviously, I've touched upon uh, Simicus being really a fault early on. One of his downfalls, I think, really, that's stopping him from being a high-level uh, left-back is his decision-making is erratic. His decision making after three minutes was poor, but what I would say uh, is that how he turned things around in the in the game, and he had a pretty good game, I think. After that, that shows great mental fortitude. I was really happy for him to get his assist there. But across the pitch, there mature performance from Trent, great bit of quality, obviously for his assist. The two centre backs, unbelievable, <laughs> absolutely unbelievable, brilliant. They just they dovetail really well, and they just both looked impervious. All three midfield players, exceptional. McAllister, brilliant, got on the ball so much, utilised the ball so much and, and so well. Um, he was great. Gravenberg grew into the game, I think, I think in the second half. He was fantastic. I think a lot of that was down to maybe Milan kind of tiring and not really being up to the task. And uh, Gravenberg, he was, he was fantastic there. And then, yeah, the front three, brilliant. Maybe Jota... Uh, a little bit of criticism of him there. He was getting involved. He was trying there. I think he could probably do with a rest. Take him out the line like there. He hasn't scored for a little bit. I don't think that's it. And that's really to worry about. But, you know, maybe it's time to give Nunes a start on Saturday, which which could happen there. Maybe it's time for Gakpo to play in the middle. Or do you play Diaz on the left there? Uh, this is against Bournemouth, of course, on Saturday, three o'clock kickoff, I think, again there. I think he might. I don't think we'll see a lot of rotation. I think Robertson will be back at left back. Maybe a little bit of tinkering up top. I think maybe Nunes to start down the middle. And he, it's tricky. What does he do? I think Gakpo's done enough there to 
to get a start, really. Diaz won't be happy, but I think that's the nature of competition for places and having a good squad, especially up front. We've got six players looking to, uh, to fit into three positions. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. Me personally, I, I think Gakpo has got to play there. I think you've got to start on the left. As much as I like Diaz, and I think he's had a really good start to the season. He's added those goals and the final product to his game. I think after a performance like that, I think you really have to say, OK, well, Gakpo, it's, it's, it's your game. Same as Slobber's like, there was some call for a bit of rotation there. I think he'll start against uh, against Bournemouth, and then obviously we have got West Ham after that. When there'll be lots of rest, you know, that lots of rest and lots of rotation, and that's where I think if these players can get through, get three points against Bournemouth and a few more individual strong performances. Again, we're looking at Sobosly and we're looking at Gakpo in particular. If they can turn them in, and then have a little rest against West Ham, I think that's going to do their confidence wonders. So, Liverpool get up to the Champions League with a flying start. I think this new format looks like it's going to be absolute garbage. Let's see what it's like in a, you know after I don't know four or five games. Is it going to be is there going to be any jeopardy there at all? Is there going to be any excitement there at all? I I don't think so. I think it's fundamentally unfair. And this is speaking of someone as a Liverpool fan who's one of the biggest teams in Europe. I think it's it's favouring the bigger teams and I think it's just it's just trying to guarantee more money more games less jeopardy more the same teams getting through to the knockout rounds I think it looks terrible but let's see what happens so onwards and upwards in the Premier League and onwards and upwards in the Champions League Bournemouth Saturday let's see how we get on things are looking a little bit brighter again on the honor slot up the Reds